The topic for today is our IOLink solution. We will cover the IOLink main features, advantages, and our IOLink hardware offering. This webinar goal is that all of you will have a good understanding of this new feature and its benefits. We will also have a Q&A session at the end. So during the webinar, if anyone has any question, please just write it at the question section. So uh, just a general overview of IOLink properties and their benefits. IOLink is an IEC standard communication protocol used for a sensor and actuators. It is widely used in the industry by the most of the sensor and actuator manufacturers. Using this technology, we can make sensors smarter and more informative than just a binary or a simple analog information sensors. For example, a simple IOLink photo sensor can give us the element distance, the ambient temperature, and even the glass transparency of the sensor for a maintenance reasons. We also can change the sensor operation mode directly via the PLC using the IOLink communication. This protocol is supported by all the main sensor vendors, so we can connect any vendor sensor to our hardware. On the hardware configuration picture at the right, you can see a general description of the connectivity method. We will discuss that later. On this slide, you can see the market annual growth. So the rate is around 30% a year. It become a standard in the automation industry and it is well adopted already. I'm sure most of you heard of it or even use this technology already. Uh, just a quick break. Uh, I want to ask you if everybody can hear me, just to make sure. Just raise your hand. Let's see? Good, good. Okay, so you can find more information on the Profibus organization website. There you can see uh, the growth of the IOLink communication protocol technology. Uh, just some of the IOLink terms. So we start with the first one, the IOLink master. The IOLink master is the gateway unit used to connect the PLC to the IOLink devices. It could be sensor, actuators, digital apps, manifolds, etc. The Unistream PLC uses the Ethernet IP protocol to connect those master units. So uh, I'm sure you're already familiar with the Ethernet IP protocol. Next is the IOLink Hub. IOLink Hub is a digital input and output manifold that has up to 16 DIOs of course, it depends on the, model, on the model. We will cover that later. IOLink device. IOLink device could be a sensor, actuator, or any other device that support the protocol, the IOLink protocol. Next, we have the IOLink port class. So uh, we have two class four types. Uh, you, you can have a look uh, at the table uh, to the right. So we have class A. Class A is actually the most used type. It's used for a sensor and actuator that are not demanding more than uh, two amps. So I think that's uh, the most uh, usable uh, option. It also have an additional digital IO pin if needed, just in case needed. Class B on the other, on the other end has additional power source for the device that demand more power. And therefore, the optional digital IO pin is missing. As I say, this four type is less common, but we only have it as an option in case needed. Now, we will cover our IO link hardware offering. 
starting with the main unit, the master. You can see the picture on the right. So we have three types of masters. The basic one, uh, on the right picture, you can see the four IOLink class A master, the rightmost. We also have two master types with eight IOLink ports. It's the picture from the left. The first one is a 8A P6. It has uh, eight class A ports. Uh, that's the most used model. The second one is the 4A 4B P6. It has four class A ports and four class B ports. Please note that all our IOLink hardware is IP67 approved. Just a quick overview of the master specifications. For the four IOLink port master on the top, on the top, you can see the Ethernet IP port. We have two ports for the daisy chain connection in case you have more than one master on the machine or any other uh, Ethernet IP device. So you can daisy chain them. Then you can see the four IOLink A class ports that can be used for the IOLink devices, such as sensors, actuators, etc. On the bottom, you can see the power ports. Also, have we have two ports for daisy chain connection. The operating temperature is minus 25 to plus 70 degrees, so it's quite big range for these uh, devices. For the eight IOLink port master, it's the same connectivity method. Just keep in mind that uh, in the 4A, 4B, P6 model, the lower four IOLink ports are class B. Here, you can see the digital IO hubs. So hubs is different than the master. We will cover that. Those are a simple digital IO manifolds that connects to the master ports using the IOLink ports on the top. OK, so you have on the top, you have the IOLink port. That port is connected to the master. And all of these ports are just a regular simple digital IOs, OK? The module on the left side has eight IO connections, and the other two halves on the right have 16 DIO connections. Each port, each port has two digital IOs here on the 16, uh, on the 16 IO models. So two digital IO for every port. The rightmost model has additional power port on the top and can provide two amps for each output. So in case you have some actuators that demanding a lot of power, to up to two amperes per, uh, per output, so you can use this model with the additional uh, power port. Each digital port, each digital point can be configured as input or output. It depends on the user demand. Remember, those are non IOLink ports, only digital IOs. So it connects to the master with IOLink communication protocol, but the ports are just digital IOs. We also offer all the accessories needed to connect the hardware to the PLC and one to another. We have splitters. If you see here, this is the splitters. Splitters that allows us to easily connect two digital IO points to, the, to one of the 60 points hub. If you remember, we have the 60 points hub that for each port we can connect to the IOs. So with these splitters, you can see in the electrical stream, you can easily connect two points to one port. Uh, some IOLink devices has 
some configuration setting that is out of the standard PLC, the sensor communication video. So we also have IOLink device configuration tool. It's a standalone USB device. You see here the ADP ULK CFG. Uh, that's a standalone USB device that allows us to configure the IOLink sensor or actuator if needed. You can see uh, the PC software used for the uh, for, uh, in, in the right picture. This software is used for uh, configuring uh, the non PDO uh, elements for the IOLink. You can download download it in our website. Most of IOLink devices manufacturer offer their own configuration tool device, but we decided to offer our own device. Of course, our tool can connect to any vendor device. You can find all the information on Unitronic's website, of course. Here you can see a general overview of hardware connectivity. So start with the PLC, the Unistream PLC, then we have the Ethernet IP, it's Ethernet IP with daisy chain, one master to another. Then we have uh, the IOLink the, uh, the IOLink ports, so we can connect simple IO point, just a digi uh, digital in or out. Uh, it's just an optional. Of course, these ports is used mostly for the IOLink devices. So. We can also, of course, add the third party IOLink devices, could be sensor from any vendor, let's say Omron, Turk, etc. And last one is the hubs. So we already covered the apps, the digital IO, simple digital IO units. And on the bottom, you can see the power. This power is also a daisy chain. Here you can see the splitters. So for the 16 points hubs, we have splitters that can. Uh, that allows us to easily connect the two uh, DIOs together to one port. As always, we are keeping our all-in-one concept. We developed a very easy setup in Unilogic. We have an IODD import tool inside Unilogic. For those of you who are less familiar with the IOLink technology, IOLink file is a simple XML file provided by the IOLink device vendor. It's free to download on their site or from the IODD finder site. It's a free site. This file contains all the detail of the information available from the device, such as identity, parameters, process data PDOs, diagnostic data, and communication properties. I will show you that uh, later on the Unilogic demo. On the small table, you can see the relation between Unistream models to the maximum allowed master. So for the standard PLC, we have B5, we have up to eight master. For the basic one, the B3, we have only one master allowed. And for the B10, the pro model, we have up to eight masters. Also, we will have a UL certification for this product line. Okay, now I will demonstrate the general setup in Unilogic. Just a second. Okay, let's see. Does all of you see the screen, the Unilogic screen? Please raise your hand just to make sure. Great, great. Okay, so I am sure all of you, or at least most of you, already know the Unilogic software. So uh, we have a new version released lately, the 1.34.192. So uh, this one is already containing the IOLink feature. So going to the IOLink remote IO, uh, but first remember, because this technology, the masters are working on the Ethernet IP, so 
I already said the CPU Ethernet IP address. Okay, so don't forget uh, to set the CPU Ethernet IP. So we have a PLC. Then here you can see uh, the new feature IOLink Remote IO. Now we can choose which master do we want to add to the project. So start with the basic one, the eight port. Of course, we all also have four ports, but just for the sample. So we drag and drop the master. Now you can see the master, the eight port master. This one is the eight AP6, the eight class A ports. And now we can add the devices to the master. So on the right, on the right toolbox, you can see the option that we have. So starting with the hubs, you see the hubs with, you can drag and drop it. This is the eight point digital IO hub. Then we have the 16 point digital IO hub. Just drag and drop, simple, very simple. Then we can also have single digital IO, uh, just an option, of course, it is not, <laughs> it is not smart to use uh, just a single uh, digital IO for that. And the most important thing is the IO link device. That could be a sensor or an actuator. So we add the IO link device, but first I will show you uh, regarding the hubs. So when I click one of the hubs, on the right side, I have all the pins and now I can configure each point to be digital input or digital output. Same for the eight port uh, hub of the eight points. So digital input or digital output. Same for the input. Of course, you can choose between them. And here we have the IOLink device. Remember what I explained to you about the IODD file. So here we can add, import the IODD file that already downloads from the manufacturer uh, website. So I click import. I already uh, download a Turk IODD file. It's actually a simple inductive sensor. This sensor gives us uh, the distance from the inductive object and some more information you will see. So I will just choose uh, the IODD file. You see here it's already uploaded. And now I can see it here at the automatic struct. We have already uh, automatic struct created. So we go to the input struct. Then we see this sensor is sitting on the port three, X3, you see? So we have the port three. We have all the information from the IODD file. So this uh, simple sensor is just an inductive sensor that gives, gives us an analog signal of the uh, inductive uh, distance. So analog signal, and then we have the target out of range warning, just a bit, temperature warning, and, and low temperature warning. Also, we have an output state. Okay, so it's really, really depends uh, on the on the model of the sensor, on the type of the sensor. Each sensor with this IODD file will contain uh, uh, another information. It could be a color sensor, it could be some spatial actuators, it could be anything that supports the IOLink uh, communication protocol. Okay, so uh, that's basically all about the Unilogic. It's very, very simple. Now you can add uh, you can add this I.O. or this information to your ladder program easily. Everything are already configured for you.